set. Lies. The Extroth. Kangaroo Island is just off the South Australian coast. 4,500 square kilometres of pristine beauty. A place steeped in history. This is the Southern Ocean. Down that way, the Antarctic. Over there, mainland Australia. It's rugged down here. A rocky island that at times is buffeted by ferocious seas and brutish winds. For sailors, Cape Willoughby has long been a welcome sight. It offered solace, confirmation of course, and safety. But for some, the lighthouse on those sharp cliffs is a dark and frightening place. Songwriter Clive Daniels and his wife Robin have experienced the tranquility, the solitude, and the mystery of Cape Willoughby and its lighthouse the first one built in South Australia in 1852. I could put it into words, this place is a poet's dream. It's one of fascination and fascination and the unknown. Back in April 1993, the Daniels, along with members of their family and friends, were here for a weekend reunion. They had the cape to themselves. Even the ranger was away. And from the very start, there were ominous signs that this was to be no ordinary holiday. The first member of the party to sense something strange was Clive's sister, Shirley Buckley. I put the things on the bed and I, I really felt uncomfortable. It was really, really very cold and I thought, I don't like it. There's a bad atmosphere in there. I didn't like it at all. The first night passed peacefully enough, and Clive Daniels was getting down to the serious business of songwriting. By the second night, he knew exactly where and when he'd find his inspiration. Up in the old lighthouse at midnight. It was a night just like this, cold, still and crystal clear that things started to change for Clive. What was to follow would almost literally scare he and his wife out of their wits. The lighthouse was deserted. Clive had the only key. All was silent, except for the waves crashing down below. The lamp above swept its arc across the lonely sea. As Clive gingerly made his way through the eerie labyrinth by torchlight, he was oblivious to the gloom around him. Already, words and music were floating through his mind. Footsteps in the night I hear call. Footsteps in the night in the dawn. As he settled down at the very top of the lighthouse to compose, the atmosphere inside slowly began to change, slowly began to seem threatening. I heard a creaking of creaking sound, and it was, it was almost like a, a wooden a wooden door opening. Sl you know, just a, a slow but a definite creak of, of wood. And that sort of baffled me a bit because there's no wooden door there. And then I heard footsteps coming down. Naturally, he was nervous. But then, inexplicably, his torch died on him a torch with a brand new battery. And all about him, inside the darkened lighthouse, Clive could feel a presence, a presence like nothing on earth. It was just like an icy cold mist that was all around me. It almost, it almost touched me, but when I reached out, I could feel it. It was a dry, icy cold chill. And as you reached into it, you could feel, you knew that something was there, believe me. It's, you know that it was watching you, yet you couldn't see it. Icy cold. So cold, Clive could feel the shivers down his spine. 
the shivers of fear. I thought for the first time in my life, I'll, it's time to go. I knew whatever it was in there didn't want me in there. So I put my guitar in the case and I felt my way down the steps at the same time with my right hand I was trying to find the, the key to the lighthouse so I could get out there and lock it up and, and just leave. I felt uncomfortable there. Darkness, strange noises, icy pockets of air and not a soul to be seen. Was it the mind playing tricks or was it something else? Clive decided it was something else, something he couldn't explain. And as he locked up and left, the mystery of Cape Willoughby deepened. First, just as suddenly as it went out, his torch went on again. And then... I looked back at the lighthouse and I could feel something was watching me almost from the top window. And it was... You could almost feel as though there's someone up there. It was really strange, you know, it's... It's quite, quite strange. The eerie presence that Clive Daniels felt in the Cape Willoughby Lighthouse chilled him. The appearance of a silhouette in the lighthouse window had unsettled him greatly. Was his mind playing tricks, or was this dark, brooding landscape home to a ghostly apparition? Perplexed and afraid, Clive returned to the room he was sharing with his wife, Robin. He decided not to disturb her, but it seems that icy, ghostly presence had other ideas. Shortly after, about must have been about half an hour after, my wife suddenly woke up and she she sensed a presence in the room. And she said, "What's that?" And I could feel it too. It was almost that same sort of presence she had in the lighthouse. The the sort of the eerie feeling that someone was watching. Someone was there almost, you know. And, and I, I reached up into the air and to see if I could touch it. And it's strange. As soon as you lift your arm, it goes icy cold. And I said, someone's in here. Because it felt like someone was watching me. Not like your little daughter coming in and saying, Mum, you know, when you're asleep. It was like something bigger. Just shortly after that, the shower started running. And uh, my wife commented to me, about the shower running. She says, who would be having a shower so early in the morning? We looked, I looked at my watch and it was 2.30 in the morning. For 15 minutes, the shower continued. And when it eventually stopped, Robin decided to investigate. I couldn't believe it. There was no mist, there was no steam, the floor was completely dry. No one had, the towels were all neat. The bath mat was still hanging and it was dry. And I came back to my husband and I said, there was no one in the bathroom. That morning, the party assembled early for breakfast, just after five o'clock, in fact. When my husband came in, he was looking very white, very frightened, and a little bit confused. And there were questions that had to be asked. The keen one that got off at 2 30 in the morning and had a shower. No one could answer that. Not one of them had been anywhere near the bathroom all night. Then Clive's sister Shirley told him that during the night she'd had the distinct impression that someone had entered her room. The shape that I, I saw it was a shape that was uh, uh, on the chair and uh, I, th I thought, this looks for all the world like there's somebody sitting there, you know. And uh, so I thought, oh, I'm not sure about this. And I waited for the light to flash around the room again to have another look. And sure enough, it was still there. And uh, I thought, well, I don't know, it must be, must be luggage or a backpack or something that was left on, on the chair from the night before. Uh, and uh, I, I, th I could have tried to convince myself of that fact. But at dawn, when Shirley checked, the backpack was nowhere near the chair. Stranger still, there was a trail of sand across the room. It hadn't been there the night before, and none of the group had been to the beach. Finally, there was one more thing, the one that finally sent the family packing. 
who were all sitting around at a table, and um, all of a sudden the newspaper that was on the seat next to my wife, start, the pages started to turn over on their own, and there was no window open, no door, and my wife jumped about, <laughs> must have been about a foot in the air. We had to move because they were they slightly fear, they were fearful of what could have happened, and they couldn't explain the unexplained. Robin and Clive Daniels did try. They discovered that Cape Willoughby Lighthouse looms above a boiling gorge called the Devil's Kitchen. Since records were first kept back in 1847, more than 40 ships have been lost at sea off the coast here. In most cases, sailors lost their lives. And at least one lighthouse keeper died on duty. His name was John Tapley, and he was found dead in the Lantern Room at 6 a.m. on January the 23rd, 1869. The Daniels now wonder whether John Tapley's still around, or whether the presence at Cape Willoughby is the ghost of a sailor who perished out at sea. Whatever the answer, none will ever satisfy Shirley Buckley. I wouldn't go and stay the night there again. No, no. The daytime I'd go to visit because it was a beautiful place and I loved it, but uh, definitely not at night. And as for Clive Daniels, he did get to write those songs. The lyrics, though, don't offer any explanation for the icy mist, the footsteps, the noises, or anything else that happened that April night at Cape Willoughby. We we're all very sceptical that it's changed, it's changed our, our perspective in life tremendously to think that what you had beliefs in before and couldn't exist, it does exist. It's out there, believe me.